So I built this add-in for Microsoft Office uh, Word application that shows uh, all the spelling mistakes uh, from a document on a single view and uh, we can use the, this view to correct all those spelling mistakes without having to navigate uh, to each word one at a time. So I created this add-in uh, using a C-Sharp, WPF and uh, Visual Studio tools for Office uh, runtime. And uh, in this video, I will uh, show you how to use this add-in and uh, I will give you an overview of uh, the code that is uh, running uh, within this uh, add-in. The add-in shows each word that has a spelling mistake within the document inside a text box on this view. And uh, the text box uh, is also enabled with the default uh, .NET spell check mechanism that shows some uh, suggestions uh, when you right click on the word if that don't work for you then you can type it yourself and uh, as you can see here uh, on this view each word also has a arrow key and uh, this arrow key will uh, navigate uh, to that word within the document and uh, the refresh button on this view will uh, just uh, update the list uh, like uh, when uh, there are new words uh, that have that have spelling mistakes uh, then it will add uh, the new words uh, to the list and if you corrected yourself uh, manually within the document then uh, it will remove it will remove the words uh, from the list so if i correct it and i click the refresh button it will remove the word from uh, the list and if I add another mistake, when I click this, it will add that word to the list. And the save button will uh, just uh, simply save the changes uh, back to the document. So I will correct, uh, I will correct uh, these mistakes uh, uh, on this view by using uh, the right click uh, suggestions. And uh, when I click uh, the save button, uh, all these changes uh, will be reflected uh, in the document. Here, uh, as you can see, all the uh, spelling mistakes are within the document are gone. And uh, you can simply save your document here. Now, I will give you an overview of the code that is working uh, within this adding, specifically the code uh, that is behind uh, this uh, task pane, behind this uh, UI. And uh, I will not give you the details about the code uh, that is creating this uh, separate tab on the Word application. And uh, I will not also give you the code that is creating uh, this uh, task pane. I will only give you the details about the code that is getting uh, all the words that have spelling mistakes from the document and uh, the implementations of uh, these buttons, the arrow buttons and a refresh button and a save button this is the xaml uh, file uh, for the ui uh, that shows uh, a list of uh, words uh, that have uh, spelling mistakes and uh, this is its uh, code behind file as you can see here uh, i have added a refresh button and a save button uh, to this uh, xaml file and uh, inside this uh, scroll viewer uh, the add-in shows uh, the list and to show the list, I'm going to use the uh, items control and then name it so by naming uh, this items control we can uh, access uh, the control uh, inside its uh, code behind it is working when user opens uh, the UI the task pane uh, it has to be loaded with uh, uh, spelling errors uh, from the active document so uh, for that I'm going to use uh, I have to utilize uh, the loaded event of uh, the user control And here, uh, 
I'm going to define uh, this uh, code block uh, as a, as a within a separate uh, uh, function so that I can re reuse uh, this code uh, so that I can call or uh, reuse uh, this code block uh, within uh, refresh button as well. I will name it as a load. Since uh, the add-in is being created uh, using the uh, Visual Studio tools uh, for Office uh, runtime, the the runtime will uh, give us uh, a global class, and uh, through that global class, we can uh, access a uh, host application information, uh, such as uh, document information, uh, all kind of information. Uh, and I'm going to use that uh, whole uh, global class. So that global class will be uh, accessible uh, throughout all the C# -shop files. Uh, within the uh, add-in project so uh, this user control uh, is also part of the add-in project so we can access the global class so this is the class uh, that uh, the runtime the visual studio of visual studio uh, visual studio tools for office runtime uh, give us so we can use this globals this add-in application so uh, I need a uh, so this load method uh, will uh, get the active document uh, we can define uh, uh, other parameters uh, to get uh, the other uh, documents that are open side by side within this uh, within the uh, word application so uh, user clicks the refresh button uh, that means uh, the user is present uh, on a document and uh, uh, it has to get uh, that document and uh, get the and then get the uh, spelling mistakes uh, from that document from that active document So uh, the active document property of uh, this uh, of the application object uh, gives us uh, a document object, and uh, through that document object we can access uh, spelling errors. So this is the property, uh, and uh, you know what. Uh, I will use uh, directly that property in uh, iteration as a for loop as well. So in uh, uh, word uh, office interoperability, uh, the index uh, will always start uh, at uh, number one. Uh, they are not a zero based index. Uh, the index will also uh, always start uh, at the number one. So that is the uh, that that is the key point uh, you have to be noted in your mind. So uh, the collections are within the uh, Windows Office, uh, Microsoft Office interoperabilities are not a zero based index. When I use the index uh, on uh, this collection, it will it will return a range object uh, that represents uh, the range uh, uh, of the word that contains uh, the spelling errors. So uh, I cannot use uh, uh, the range objects itself uh, for uh, data binding uh, within the XAML code as well. Uh, within the XAML code, uh, for that reason, I need a, a helper class. So that it can hold uh, the necessary information for uh, XAML binding. And uh, I'm going to name this uh, helper class as a spell error. Uh, in this uh, helper class, uh, I need two properties. One is a text property uh, of type uh, string uh, that I will use uh, for uh, data binding, uh, XAML data binding, and uh, the other one is of type range uh, that will I will use uh, for uh, within uh, save button implementation
So I have to collect both these uh, values for both uh, these properties. So uh, using index on uh, spelling errors collection will return uh, the range object and the range object has text property and I need uh, the range object itself. So here I constructed the helper object. Uh, the helper class object so uh, I need a collection uh, that holds uh, the helper class uh, objects uh, for uh, this items control So I'm using uh, the collection uh, for uh, the item sources. So whenever uh, the code, the whenever the code uh, within this file uh, adds or removes uh, uh, items from this collection, uh, will uh, reflect on the UI. <coughs> Before loading it, uh, I have to clear the collection. Uh, let's uh, run this uh, and see what happens or uh, whether it works or not. Oh. Uh, before that uh, I need to define a data template uh, for the items uh, that the items control will uh, have for that I need to define a data template So within this uh, grid, uh, I will define uh, two columns, uh, one for a text, text box and one for uh, the arrow button. So here, uh, this data binding will be uh, in a two uh, two way. That means uh, whenever uh, uh, a change happens uh, within the source property, uh, that will be, that will be reflected in the text box. At the same time, when user uh, make changes within the text boxes, the change the change will also be reflected uh, within the source property. I mean within the source object.
this method within the event handler loaded event handler So the basic uh, UI formation is uh, done. Uh, I will make some changes to look like uh, uh, the one I have, the one I showed you earlier uh, in this video. In this text box, uh, I have to use, uh, I have to enable uh, the default uh, spell check mechanism uh, that is provided with uh, from the .NET. For that, is enabled. So by defining uh, this property, uh, we we actually enabling uh, the default uh, or the default uh, .NET uh, spell check mechanism uh, within the text box. The add-in is uh, showing, uh, uh, it is loading uh, every error uh, when the user opens the UI for the first time and I need to, I have to implement uh, the arrow buttons and uh, refresh and a save button. Uh, with that, uh, the demo will be completed. The refresh button implementation uh, simply calls uh, the load method and uh, as, I, as I explained before, uh, the load method will uh, just uh, get the active document and the spelling errors uh, uh, within the document here into this. So before save button, uh, I will uh, implement the go to button in click event handler. So the sender uh, will be always uh, of a button type. So using the data context uh, property of uh, the control, we can access uh, this corresponding uh, data object. The data object uh, is of type uh, speller, which is a helper class uh, I used. to wrap uh, the information, the spelling, uh, the word information. Though so, the spell error object has a range, of object, a range object and the range object gives us a select method which selects the word uh, within the document. So let's uh, run this application and uh, see whether it works or not. So uh, I have completed a refresh button as well, uh, refresh working. Uh, 
and uh, I also completed the click event handler of uh, the arrow button. So it is also working. The only one thing is left uh, is the save button implementation. So each helper object has uh, each help each helper class has a range object, and the range object also has the text property, and uh, this text property has a get and set uh, accessor. So we can assign uh, text to this uh, range. Uh, when after when we assign a text uh, to this uh, property, uh, the word that is uh, represented with this uh, range object will also get uh, changed. So, so as uh, as I explained before, uh, the text property uh, of the helper class uh, is uh, data binded uh, with within the uh, with the text box uh, within the UI. So, it uh, here as you can see here. It is a two-way um, data bind uh, with the text property of the helper class. So, as I explained before, whenever user makes uh, changes uh, within the text box, the change also reflected uh, within the uh, data object, and uh, the text property will hold that change. So, I am assigning uh, that uh, text uh, to the range object. Uh, I think it is better uh, if I give a demo then you uh, it will help you to understand what I mean. So right now uh, I will use uh, the suggestions uh, from the .NET within the text boxes. So here I made uh, changes uh, within the text boxes and uh, the changes uh, will be automatically reflected uh, within the data objects and uh, the uh, data objects uh, since uh, uh, the text box and the data objects uh, have two way binding. So when I click the save button the changes uh, that are available within the data objects uh, will get assigned to its uh, range objects. Uh, when we add in assign the changes to the range objects, uh, the range object uh, reflects uh, uh, the changes uh, on the U on the document. I mean, on the UI uh, of the uh, Word document. So that is it. Uh, I think uh, the objective of this video is completed. And uh, thank you for watching. And I will give you a link to this project uh, in the video description. And thank you for watching.